I think that Americans again have to come face to face with reality. The reality is our colleagues on the other side, A, don't believe in climate change, first of all, okay? Even though I would say 95% of the science community agrees that this is reaching a tipping point in terms that once it reaches that point, if you were wrong about it, there's no return. So, he had 95% of the scientists basically saying, hey, this is a serious problem. You have our military talking about this, not in terms of climate change, but in terms of what it, re what it represents to us in terms of a national security threat. So I think the national security and science are okay. What's really at the bottom of this, though, too, is I think something that most Americans agree with, and that's energy independence. The problem with cap and trade is what's the trade? And who's going to make the trade? And what bureaucracy are you forming? And is that going to be, is that going to be, you know, another, is that the next ball? Well, I would say follow the wax. Well, a lot of good stuff in that. There we, if I make this comment, we're three quarters of the way there. On okay. all the science and on everything as it relates to the environment and energy controls. Now, so the question becomes, what's the mechanism? I believe that the money from the tax should go back to the ratepayer. Because if you don't send the money back to people, if we're going to ask people to sacrifice, weather, weatherize their homes, prepare for the future in terms of what could, what's going to happen to them in terms of the cost of energies in their homes. You're going to have people that are saying, the hell with you. I burn more coal. I don't care. I'll breathe in that. How much time do I have less? I'm going to breathe in that because I can't afford it. If you're going to give the money in an auction so that the hedge funds and, and the derivative companies can make up. No, that's not my point at all. No, no, no. Well, simply, but, but I understand. I understand that's not your point. What I'm saying is, our opposition is saying, who are they kidding? That's not cap and trade, that's cap and tax. And, and he said, at least Larson, I have a, I'm a believer that you ought to pass the money along. You ought to tell people, number one, is tax. Well, ask them to look at what we've done here in Connecticut with these programs that have gotten national recognition. I mean, you're talking about driving down people's energy bills at the same time you're reducing admissions, emissions at the same time you're getting off foreign sources of energy, how is that not a win-win-win? And with due respect to your, your colleagues across the aisle, I went and visited Representative Boehner's website where if he's so, if he's a smart enough guy that he can take on the MIT professors who have looked at this cap and trade si uh, um, system and you know given us a number, it's about $300 per year, uh, for the average person, which I know at $300 people would rather not pay, but I think we have to be honest, if we don't do something, we're going to be paying a whole lot more. Well, Representative Boehner has looked at the MIT study, and I think he's, I'm just amazed he has the gall to say that MIT doesn't know what they're talking about. It's not 300, it's 3,000. And I think Representative Boehner needs to be called out on that. And he, right? I call them on, I call them on, there's three, there's three points that I think have to be made with respect to this. What Sensenbrenner, who heads up the select committee, has said is, look, we're calling it a tax. And then Mark, who chairs the committee, says, so you're in favor of Larson's program that says, call it a tax. He says, he says, that's right. 